we're going to be in chapter 4 now. We finished 3, we're going to get to chapter 4. No, we didn't finish 3. We have to live to see a church, right? Now, Laodicea means ruled by the people. And how did God know that at this time, the church would have so much money and so much prestige that at this time, he's saying that he will be on the outside of this church, knocking on the door, trying to see if he can get in so that he can come in and sup with the people. Because remember, these letters are to the church. Understand? Amen. Okay, let's read Laodicea. It says, to the angel of the church of Laodicea, write, these are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other, so because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say I am rich and have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Okay, he's talking about the Laodicean church, right? Right. Now listen, this is where the Lord wanted me to stop and explain something to you. How does a person who accepts Christ, Jesus, Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, become lukewarm? Understand? You are in a battle, okay? No soldier gets up in the morning and says, I think I'll leave my gun here today because it's just too heavy to carry. <laughs> and that old helmet that keeps the bullets from hitting my head, whoo, it makes my head too hot. I'm not going to wear that today. A matter of fact, forget these boots. I got some flip flops. <laughs> you understand? This is okay. This is the mentality of a Christian that says, oh, "I went to a prayer last week. I don't need it this week. I've been good all year. I've been going to church. This is the fifth straight week. I don't need church no more. I don't know. So what's he doing? He's relaxing, right? Right. So he's at home. He's watching TV. Somebody calls and says, I'm doing a survey on Christians. Are you a Christian? Yes, I am a Christian. I have a name, but I'm dead. Right? So this becomes this lukewarm attitude. Right, right. Now, this is what God wants me to tell you because he says a battle is going on. The Lord had me do a, a study this week on demons. Because a lot of us really don't believe that we are spiritual beings living in a natural world. Right. The only reason you can see you is because you're in flesh. You are a spirit right. with a soul that has someplace else to go. That's right. But to live here, you have to have flesh. Okay? So understand, we are spiritual beings. Angels are spiritual beings. God is a spirit. Does the scripture say so? Yes. Yes. So this is a spiritual environment, but we are fleshly creatures. A battle is always going on, and I looked up, and I, God said, I want you to study demons and their behavior. And God showed me that demons have a king over them who is Satan. Right. And they obey what he tells them to do. Then they have what they call, because Christ says you, 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 have, you will have power over principalities and power. Yeah. Principalities is a demon in charge over another group of demons in a certain area. Right. Okay? So, and they do what that, that uh, head demon tells them to do. Right. Now, none of them get out of line. You know why? They're afraid of something. Right. And I don't know what it is. But militarily, they don't love each other because demons don't have love and neither do Satan. Right. So that's not why they're being obedient. But for some reason, they have a military operation going and their whole thing is to get Christians because they're really not worried about the world, right? Unless you're trying to get them saved, right? If you're trying to get them saved, okay, now they think, okay, hey, get back on it. Oh, don't worry about it. I got a stronghold built up inside now and she ain't going nowhere. Right, right. Okay? Because we're going to understand what's going on here. These spirits are in charge 
of destroying the lives of those who are trying to make it into the kingdom of God. Okay? Now, they're at war. And they're, now, we have a commander too. And we're at war because Christ tells us in Ephesians to put on the whole armor, right? Yeah. So obviously, there is a war going here on here because they're militarily set up and God has us militarily set up. So something's going on that we're supposed to continue in. Right. And you don't get to stop fighting until you get there. Right. Amen. You understand? Amen. When you stop fighting, you become lukewarm. Amen. Amen. You become one of the other five virgins. Right. You become this, this person that goes, oh my God, what do you mean the rapture happened? What do you mean Christ took his bride and closed the door? You don't want to be that part, so you say, I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to keep arm myself daily. It's a pleasure for me to love God. Yeah. I love studying the word of God. I look forward to a chance by myself to praise God and to pray. It's not easy. Sometimes you don't feel like praying. But is it easy carrying a 40-pound gun? No. But you got to do what it takes. Now, demons are powerful. Yes. But God gave me a revelation. And this is the revelation. God gave us two things that are more powerful than demons. And one of them, God says, it's even I can't overthrow it. Jesus Christ. The first thing is the name of Christ. The name of Jesus Christ. You have the power of it. The second thing God says is, your will is stronger than anything in the universe. It says demons can't, can't make you do anything. They can't make you. Only thing they can do is work with your will. Right. They can't make you do anything because God told me that your will is stronger. He says, it's so strong, Sandy, that I can't even overthrow it. And he says, what I've done is I will not overthrow it because I gave it to them as their free will so that they can do what they want to. He says, if they don't have a free will, then I can't judge them. But since you have a free will, then therefore God can judge you. Amen. You understand? Amen. So every one of them, and God says it's stronger than anything in the universe, is your will. Woo. And he holds us responsible for the power of the name and the will. Yes. And the world is responsible for the will because they don't know Christ. And they will not read his word. And they will not accept Christ. Because of their will. And God says he can't overpower your will. Now look. God gave me an example. I'm going to be finished in five minutes. God gave me an example. He said, I got a five-year-old son. He said, now, if, 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 if your wife cooked a, a, baked a chocolate cake and she said, I made this for grandma, don't eat it, Sammy. And I would tell my wife, okay, I'm not going to eat it. Now, when she leaves, my son's five years old, he sees the chocolate cake and says, Dad, let's eat the chocolate cake. <laughs> now, is he stronger than me? No. No, he can't overpower me. Come on. I say, no, that cake is for mom. And she, she's going to give it to grandma. We're not eating the cake. So I'm like, he goes away, he comes back because Satan never quits on you. <laughs> he said, you know, if we just ate a little piece, oh, I'm sure. Mom, mom. <laughs> so now I got a quote scripture again. <laughs> Mama has said the cake is for grandma. And we are not going to eat it. In Jesus' name. <laughs> now, he goes back. Because he wants some cake and he knows dad's 290. He didn't get to be 290. I'm not like a chocolate cake. I know he wants some chocolate cake. Because <laughs> Satan never gives up on you, right? Because he knows you in your flesh. So he comes back and says, well, what if we just took a little of the cream off? Dad, just taste it. Because he knows if I taste it, I'm going to get a slice. <laughs> so I have to tell him, look, I'm going to quote the scripture again, right? Because i got to get this, this, I don't want to come deep, but I don't want to keep on my back.
little baby do it.
with the people who have gone on before you. Because the scripture says he's going to wrap, he's going to resurrect them first, and they're going to go up into the clouds. And he says, those who are walking around, he's going to snatch us up, and we will meet them in the cloud. And you'll say, hey, mom, how's it going? And she'll say, I knew you was coming, girl. Right? And then it says, not only will all the believers be there, it will be a company of angels. It says more numeral than you can count. So we're in the presence of God with our family members who knew Christ, who knew Christ before they died, and we have thousands and millions of angels around cheering about this very moment that the bride is about to enter into the chamber. And now God says, "Oh, down there, shut the door. Let's be up there and not down there." Let's not play in this war. Soldiers for Christ. We said it for a reason. Because we in this to fight until the trumpet blows and we go home. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Yes.